I'm Sarah. I'm a lawyer, and I browsed Reddit recently to see what questions you all have about disability benefits. Here's what I found and my honest answers to some of your questions. One person wrote and asked, denied, next step. I applied originally in March, 2023. My case didn't get to DDS until this April. I had brain surgery in April, so my CE exams got pushed back until May and June. Today, I get a letter that I've been denied and they feel I can adapt to other work. Since I applied, I've gotten sicker. I can't say for sure why someone's application was denied without looking at it. And I know it's so frustrating to receive a denial when you've really been struggling. But unfortunately, most people get denied on their initial application. For many, it is just par for the course. And I often tell people when you start your initial application process that you should expect a denial as part of your journey. You have the highest chance of getting benefits when you go before an administrative law judge and have a hearing. If that's the case, you've already appealed your application twice. Do be aware that there is a deadline for appeal. So after you get a denial, you generally have 60 days plus five for mailing to submit a request for the next stage of appeal. So do be aware of those deadlines because otherwise you may have to start over. That said, here are some of the most common reasons that I've seen people get denied for disability benefits. Number one, your age. Social security scrutinizes young people at a different level than older folks. If you are under 50, they look at whether you can do any work at all rather than the type of work you've traditionally done. And so the younger you are, oftentimes the more difficult it can be to get disability benefits. Of course, that will be dependent on the severity of your conditions and many other factors. Second, not enough medical treatment. When you apply for disability benefits, you have to prove to Social Security that a medical condition will keep you out of work for at least a year despite treatment. There are many reasons for this. One is that if you end up getting treatment and that makes you okay and able to work again, that's a great outcome for you. And so Social Security wants to know that despite medical treatment, you are still having severe symptoms. One of the ways that you can prove this is through robust medical records. I've often seen that when folks don't have a lot of medical records, Social Security will be more likely to deny them. One good thing to know here is that you can always submit more medical evidence throughout your application process. So this person, for example, said that they originally applied in March, 2023, and then they had brain surgery in April. They can submit that evidence to Social Security after they've had the brain surgery, even though they initially applied before it. Number three, insufficient work credits. When you apply for Social Security, you have to prove that you are technically eligible for SSDI or SSI. For SSDI, that means you need to have enough work history and it has to be relatively recent. Unfortunately, regardless of your medical conditions, if you do not have that work history, Social Security will deny you. It's a sequential evaluation. And so that means that if you don't have the right work credits, they won't even look at your medical records or what's going on with your symptoms. Because of that, it's really important to have an understanding of your work history, your work credits, and whether you would be technically eligible. You can find this out by going to ssa.gov or by calling the Social Security Administration and asking them about your eligibility. Other things that might lead to a denial include errors in the application itself. As long as you meet the SSA's technical eligibility requirements, I would say it's worth appealing a denial. One quick thing to note is that in some scenarios, even if you are no longer technically eligible because you don't have enough recent work history, you may be able to get benefits if you can prove that you were disabled and unable to work at the time that you were still technically eligible. This is a complex evaluation and can be a little bit more difficult oftentimes. And so it can be really valuable to talk to a lawyer about the strategy for that case when you apply. A lot of folks also ask about whether they can still work and receive disability benefits. This person, for example, said, how many hours can I work without losing my disability benefits? I have a disability rehabilitation center that's trying to send me to school or work, but I have to find a job myself. How many hours can I work? That is a really tough question, and it'll be really specific to you and what type of program that you are in. There are some general rules that you can follow that Social Security has put into place. I'll say that as a lawyer, who looks at social security disability cases all the time, I 
always get a little flag if somebody is currently working or trying to go to school. That said, if you're working with a program, especially one approved by Social Security, to help you figure out how many hours you can work or what other type of vocational rehab you can engage in, obviously, defer to them. Social Security wants to know that you cannot engage in substantial or gainful activity. They consider that A, is your work substantial? Are you working a lot? B, is your work gainful? Are you making money from your work? One easy rule that Social Security uses when they define SGA is whether you are earning more than $1,550 a month in gross pay. That's pay before your health care is taken out, before taxes. So if you earn more than $1,550 a month in gross pay, Social Security will automatically consider you over substantial gainful activity. Next, I see a lot of questions about getting disability benefits with a mental health condition. This person wrote, SSDI for mental health, am I just wasting my time? In the midst of my SSDI application, 68% complete for mental health disability, acute complex PTSD, major depression, and anxiety disorder. Following a hospitalization last year and under doctor's orders, I was forced to resign from my job as a teacher last fall because my symptoms were too severe for me to work. My issues are well documented in my medical records and my functioning is still very low. Even with all the evidence and documentation, I understand that 70% of SSDI applications are denied and that mental health cases are even harder to get approved. Super discouraging. Honestly, I don't have the financial means to hire an attorney to help me with my case, and I simply don't have the energy to try and fight SSA for the next few years either. Is it even worth my time to continue this process? There are some hurdles to getting SSDI or SSI with mental health conditions, especially if you are applying only on the basis of mental health conditions. With that said, about 34% of disability applicants do report a mental health condition when they apply. If you're struggling with a mental health condition, having that record of treatment can be especially important. Things like psychiatry visits, mental health hospitalizations, all of that Social Security will consider when they're looking at your application. One other thing this person said that caught my eye is that they were forced to resign from their position due to their mental health condition. For me, as someone who's evaluating Social Security disability cases, I often look at whether somebody has a history of trying to work and being unable to, either mental health or physical, when I'm looking at whether or not this person has a good chance of getting disability benefits. This person also mentioned not having the finances to be able to hire a lawyer. Social Security disability lawyers and representatives work on contingency. So that means that they don't get paid unless they win you benefits, and they all get paid the same amount. It comes out of your back pay check, which is often your first check. There should be no ongoing payments, and for most attorneys, nothing upfront. Obviously, when you sign your retainer paperwork, your attorney should go in depth with you about what, if anything, will be expected from you in terms of payment, but most attorneys all work the same, and it's actually federally regulated. If you're applying for Social Security disability benefits, you're proving to the government that you can't work. That means you won't have access to a steady flow of income. And so Social Security has designed it so that if you get a representative or lawyer to help you, they only get paid on a contingent basis if you win benefits. That way folks can access legal help when and if they need it without worrying too much about the final cost. Another big topic that I see is how to live off your benefits check. How can people afford to purchase a house while on SSDI in this economy? Does this mean that a disabled person would have to push through and try to work in order to pay for a mortgage? I wish I could promise that disability benefits will be enough to live on comfortably. Unfortunately, that is not always the case. I will say that the maximum amount you can get in SSDI benefits is $3,800 a month. Most people get less, about $1,500 or $1,600 or $1,600 a month. There are some supplementary programs that you may be eligible for on top of your disability benefits that may be able to help if you're struggling financially. Some of these include HUD, SNAP, TANF, which is Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, the Housing Choice Voucher Program, the Home Energy Assistance Program, and you can go to benefits.gov to see what else you might be eligible for. Other places that you can try are findhelp.org, 
or your local city or state government. Supplementary benefits will be really dependent on where you live. I would check with your local city or state government, as well as with local nonprofits, to see if they offer any particular benefits in your area that might be helpful for you. We'll go ahead and leave a link in the description for more resources. I'll be keeping an eye on Reddit to answer more of your questions. In the meantime, I hope this helps, and thanks for watching.